Hello, welcome to Maths with J. So here we want to write down the symmetric matrix which gives this uh, quadratic form. So let's start off by writing down the general formula. So we're looking at the general case here where we've got ax squared plus by squared plus cz squared and so on. So the first thing to do is to just put in the diagonal of the matrix. So the coefficient of x squared, y squared and z squared goes along the diagonal. And then this matrix is going to be symmetric. So the coefficient of yz is going to be shared between these two. So one f there, one there. And similarly, when we're looking at xz or zx, that coefficient is going to go here and here. And the coefficient of xy will be there and there. So in each case, you can see that we've got 2f, 2g, 2h, but we've got 1f, one part of the matrix, and one the other part of the matrix, and similarly for the g and the h. So that means it's then very simple to write down the matrix that we want in our example. So let's start, as I did in the general example, by writing down the, the main diagonal. So we want the coefficient of x squared, so that's 3. The coefficient of y squared, negative 2. And the coefficient of z squared is 1. And then let's have a look at, um, if we look at xy next, we've got an 8 in front of the xy. So that's corresponding to 2h. So h is half of 8, in other words, 4. And we've got one of those here and one here. And then g, so that's going to be the coefficient of xz, or rather half the coefficient of xz. So half of uh, 1 is going to be a half. So that goes there and there. And finally, we're going to be halving negative 5, and that's going to go there and there. So we have written down a symmetric matrix, which is going to give that quadratic form. And what we'll do is check it, just in case you're unsure how that is actually going to give that, uh, that form, we'll check it to show that it really does do that. So let's get rid of the, um, the general case to give ourselves some more space. Right, that's better. So we've um, just left our matrix A there, and we want to check that that does give that form. So what we're expecting is that the vector, or the transpose of the vector x, multiplied by that matrix A, multiplied by the vector x, does give 3x squared minus 2y squared and so on. So we're going to check that it actually does. So let's just uh, write down what this is. So the transpose of our vector x is x, y, z. Our vector A is 3, 4, a half, 4, negative 2, negative 5 over 2, 1 half, negative 5 over 2, and 1. And then the vector x is x, y, z. So we're multiplying that lot together. So we'll start off leaving the, uh, the first vector, so x, y, z, and doing the multiplication on the vector a, the rest. So we're multiplying 3 by x, 4 by y, and so on for the, uh, the first row. So we've got 3x plus 4y plus a half z. And then the second row, 4x minus 2y minus 5 over 2z. And the last row, we've got a half x minus 5 over 2y plus z. So that's multiplied the, the a and the x together. So then the final bit of multiplication of matrices, we are going to be multiplying x by the first element of that second matrix to get 3x plus 4y plus a half z in there. And then y 
we'll multiply 4x minus 2y minus 5 over 2z. And then z, which I think I'm going to have to put on the next line because otherwise it isn't going to fit in, is going to multiply half x minus 5 over 2y plus z. So let's see what that gives us. So it's looking good because we're starting off with 3x squared and then we've got 4xy plus a half xz. So that's the first bracket dealt with. Second bracket, 4xy minus 2y squared minus 5 over 2yz. Then the last bracket, plus a half xz minus 5 over 2yz plus z squared. So let's have the 3x squared and then the minus 2y squared to match the, uh, the question. And then we're looking for 8xy. Have we got it? We have, haven't we? Because we've got 4xy and another 4xy. So we've got plus 8xy. And then we're looking for the yz term. Well, we've got two lots of minus 5 over 2yz. So that is minus 5yz. And we've got a half xz and another half xz, so that gives us a that gives us a whole xz, and finally a z squared. So we have checked and shown that our answer is correct.